Hello and welcome to the episode 191 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Among other things, today we'll see how the Beatles recorded two radio shows, how they were greeted when they returned in Liverpool in 1964, and how they got the distortion for the guitars of Revolution. Let's start with the 10th of July 1962 performance that the Beatles, with Pete Best on drums, gave at the Cavern Club in Liverpool, offering yet another couple of hours of musical entertainment for the club's lunchtime slot. One year later, in 1963, the Beatles, now with Ringo Starr on drums, faced another very busy day. In the morning, the lads were at the Aeolian Hall in London, to record two shows for their Pop Go The Beatles BBC radio programme. The shows were to be aired, respectively, on the 23rd and on the 30th of July, from 5 to 5.29 pm. The first show, the sixth of the series, was recorded from 10.30 to 1.30 pm and featured Carter Lewis and the Southerners as guests. For this episode, the Beatles performed Sweet Leader 16, A Taste of Honey, Nothing Shaking But the Leaves on the Trees, Love Me Do, Lonesome Tears in My Eyes, and So How Come No One Loves Me. The second show, the seventh in the series, was recorded from 1.30 to 3.30 pm and featured the searchers as guests, with the Beatles performing Memphis, Tennessee, do you want to know a secret? Till there was you, Matchbox, please, Mr. Postman, and a hippie hippie shake. But this wasn't enough, evidently. In the evening, arriving just in time after quite a rush on the road, the band performed the third of six consecutive engagements at the Winter Gardens in Margate, with two gigs. By the way, I'd be grateful if you shared this episode on your social media. It's good to share the love, if you want to help me creating a community of like-minded music lovers. If you want to help further, as always, please visit www.simonmas.com support to find out what else you can do. Thank you! In 1964, A Hard Day's Night came out in UK. We're talking about the single, the band's seventh issue at home, and the album with the same name. The album has the distinction to be the only one to feature only Lennon-McCartney songs in the whole Beatles discography. The advance orders alone clocked at 250,000 copies, and by the end of the year, more than 600,000 happy customers had bought their copy. On this same day, the Beatles flew to Liverpool to attend to the northern premiere of their A Hard Day's Night, the film, this time. After a press conference at the Speak Airport, they moved to the Town Hall, where they were to receive a civic reception. In the drive between the airport and the Town Hall, they were greeted by some 200,000 people about one in four Liverpoolians at the time. When they arrived at the town hall, another 20,000 people were there, screaming their names… or just screaming in general. If you want to have an idea of the madness, you can watch a minute of what happened by following the link I provided in the episode description. The video, originally aired by Granada Television, also shows John Lennon treating the adoring masses to a Sieg Heil salute. It was a clear display of how much the band had come to resent these scenes of hysteria, turning every appearance in public to something similar to a Nazi gathering. Nobody seemed to notice, and anyhow, the gesture wasn't commented upon at all. Other TV crews filmed the events of the day extensively, selling the images to news agencies around the globe. BBC One featured the Beatles' arrival and their press conference during their Look North program, aired between 6.10 and 6.35 pm. At night, the Fab Four attended the screening of their film, held at the Odeon Cinema. Fast forward four years, and we get to 1968. 
The Beatles were at the EMI studios between 7 pm and 1.30 am, working on the remake of Revolution. During the course of the session, they recorded 10 takes of the rhythm track, and then overdubbed vocals on take 10. The distortion you can hear on the guitars was achieved plugging the instruments directly into the recording console through the microphone preamps and cranking up the volumes. This signal was then put into another preamp, which in turn was turned up to add even more distortion. After several reduction mixes, the song was mixed down onto take 14 and take 15, concluding the session. John took both versions at home to decide on which one the band had to continue working. Finally, on the 10th of July 1969, the Beatles were busy with the recording of another song, Maxwell's Silver Hammer. Working as usual in Abbey Road between 2.30 and 11.30 pm, they overdubbed bass and piano, played by Paul McCartney, organ, by George Martin, anvil strokes, by Ringo Starr, guitar, by George Harrison, and lead and backing vocals on the main track. John Lennon did not take part to the recording session, probably because he despised the song. A stereo mixing wrapped up the session. Right now, instead, I'm going to wrap up the episode by inviting you to join tomorrow for a nice TV show. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.